Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Hoi Tu. Right now, I'm working at the University of Stuttgart. Today, I will show you some results obtained from the lambography experiments and also uh, some simulation results. This is the content of my talk. Firstly, of course, it's the motivation of my talk. And after that, I will show you some experimental results obtained from the EC2 lambography experiments. And after that, I will show you that how to use uh, the Rosley model to predict the crack funds uh, before the shear crack happens. And uh, finally, of course, it's conclusions and output. Motivation. As you may know, that uh, the structure still has many application in industry field and the frog behavior uh, after the steel has influence in the serving life of, of the components. So it is uh, uh, important and necessary to investigate the frog behavior of the structure steel, uh, especially in the numerical way. And the second motivation is that as discussed by the Professor Mogner yesterday, that uh, with the assistance of the institute lambography technique, and we can see that how the uh, damage evolution happened inside the material. As you can see, that uh, that uh, the the high speed X-ray that goes through the, the our target region and uh, scanning the region after the reconstruction of the, our lambography dates, and we can see that how the damage evolution happens inside the material. Here is one example. That's uh, it's showing that uh, how the damage evolution that happens the inside the aluminum 6061. And uh, inside uh, my project, and uh, uh, we want to use the in situ lamnography technique to, to see that how the damage evolution happened inside the structured steel S355. The lamnography experiments, the in situ lamnography was performed at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility in Grenoble, France. And uh, this is the, the view of the synchrotron from the aircraft. And uh, from, from this ring, that we can have the, the high-speed X-ray. And uh, when the, 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 the high-speed X-ray will go through the scanning region. And here is the, the loading device where we use to, to load our specimen. And, uh, and we, we want to use uh, the displacement that's, uh, to control our de uh, deformation. And uh, at here, that's, uh, you see the L is the, the crack propagation direction, the T is the loading direction, the S is the signaling direction. The, our idea is that uh, we scanning our specimen that's before the, each loading steps. Then we will show that how the damage evolution happens. You see that, uh, that here that we have a different uh, uh, status. That first one is the initial status before the loading happens, and then we have uh, four different that uh, uh, four different uh, scanning about uh, at the different loading steps. It is uh, interesting to see that uh, how the, the damage the evolution happens in the center of our specimen. And here I show you one example. You can see that how the damage evolution happens in the, the, the middle section of the specimen and you can see that although the stress in front of the notch is high but the, the, the void nucleation growth and collision happens that's at some other that's the position where the, the particle localized is showing that uh, the, the localized particles dominate our fracture. This is another that's uh, the evidence because that's uh, the, the localized particles uh, is very near at this crop section and you can see that uh, the, the cracks uh, happen very earlier at uh, this crop section okay here is one movie you can see that uh, how our particles uh, localize in our specimen before the loading happens you can see that uh, the, our particles localized at uh, the some regions. And the
the, this green one is the, the, the node shape, and this, the, the, here, this green is the, the localized particles. When our uh, deformation is going on, as uh, you can see, that uh, for this, it's a dynamic picture. You can see that's how the damage, damage evolution happens inside the material. The loading is this direction, and the crack propagation at uh, this direction. You can see that at some initial that the loading steps, we have the parallel the crack along the L direction. And uh, when the shear crack happens, that's the, the final crack that changes the crack the tunnels connected with the initial notch. Uh, here is another movie. Then you can see that uh, what's the final that the crack shape uh, look like. You can see that the, the crack only happens at where the particle localized. And because the, 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 the emergency of the shear crack, our final the crack shape is with some angles. Like this. In the next, I will show you that how to use the, the damage model. Uh, that means the Rosewood damage model to predict the flat crack before the shear crack happens. As you may know, that the, the Rosewood model was created in 1987 to describe the void nucleation growth and coalescence. And according to this equation, we will know that uh, there are four Rosewood parameters the F0 value. <coughs> The initial world volume fraction, Fc value is a critical world volume fraction. When the damage happens, the sigma k value is a material dependent parameter, and the Lc value is the average distance between the particles. And according to our previous investigation, that's our paper in 2013, and we found that we use the Fc value is 5%, sigma k is 445 megapascal, and LC value is, I use this value, uh, it's a similar value according to the metallography investigation. And uh, for, for the average F0 value that we obtained from our uh, laminography. This is the geometry of our specimen, and because of the symmetry, only half our specimen is used for the simulation. This is the, the finite element mesh and the bonding conditions. This is the loading line, and this is the CMOD, where the crack mouse opening displacement is obtained. This is the detail element mesh around the initial crack front. Okay. And we use the, the, this element size around the initial crack tape. Our first calculation was performed when we considered that the, the region of the elements in front of the notch with the average F0 value which we obtained from our laminography experiments. And uh, after calculation, we found that the, the lump is the 2D crack happens in the center of the specimen and, uh, and this, this is different from what we observed from our laminography. If you remember that uh, in the previous slide I have shown that the, the lung is a 2D crack that happens at, uh, not in the center of the specimen but at another cross section. So we think that uh, if we just uh, de define the the, the, the regions in front of the notch with the average value is not, not good. So the, the idea is that we want to use the real F0 value to define the regions in front of the, the notch and to, to see whether we can predict the real crack, crack fronts. We define the regions in front of the notch by 
150 cubic micrometer box, and after that, you can see that we divide these regions into 70, 72 small regions. For each region, we analyze the data from our learning graph data and get the real value, and then we define for each region in front of our uh, initial notch with the real value. And uh, you can see that after calculation, before the shear crack happens, that the, the, the longest crack is not in the middle of the specimen. It is uh, close to our lambographic observation. When our calculation is going on, that's, you can see that that's, uh, some undamaged uh, region is surrounded by the damaged region. This is also one evidence to show you that the, the lo localized particle dominate our fracture. And another idea is that, is that we increase our, that's, uh, the box and uh, then we make the simulation. And after calculation, we see that uh, the, the longest 2D crack also that happens that's an, at another crop section I think this is also similar to the, our simulation, uh, to lovely graphic observation, but we cannot predict exactly the crack, uh, crack lines. So, we, we want to see, can we just de define or divide the, the regions in front of the notch to the uh, three simple regions and give the, each region the real values and uh, to predict the crack propagation? So we de define the regions in front of the notch by the, the three regions. One region is a, we call it a high F0 value region. The other region is a low F0 value region. And for the blue one, it's the average F0 value region. After calculation, that's, you can see that before the shear crack happens, that's, we can predict the, the, the longest 2D crack the position is just exactly 200 micrometers from the center and the shape is very close to our experimental observation. You can see that here is a comparison between the laminography picture and our simulation. So we can see that by when defining the, the 3D Rosalind model with the right F0 value which obtained from the laminography dates, we can predict the, the crack from very, very good, very well. And finally, it's a conclusion and output. The first conclusion is that, that we can show, we can obtain the 2D sections and the 3D images of the London graphic data showing the damage evolution of the sheet specimen. And we found that the particles are localized at some regions. And by, by using the right F0 value, we can predict the, the the frog shape before shear crack arise, and the simulated frog shape is influenced by the local world volume fraction. Here is the outlook. One possible that work in the future is that we want to get the real, the loosely parameter from the, our laminar graphic data. For example, we want to get the uh, real FC values when the damage happens, because before we just use the five percent according to our premise that uh, work. So we want to get the exact value. That's the second possible work is the prediction from the virtual crack propagation simulation with the statistical consideration of different volume fraction. That's all. Thank you for your. Time.